Shema, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Akah. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah and bless your name.
having an understanding of what making each day counts really mean because a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day and the most high God has a 7,000 year redemption plan and he came to deliver us and I'm excited to be in the wilderness so he can teach me his ways so he can order our steps so we know right now that he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. So I'm thankful on the sixth day that I have more understanding of coming out of Passover and going into the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because he is the bread that came down from heaven. Come on, Yeshua, and stand up this morning and give us understanding of what we're doing in a time and a season of preparation. Between the time of Passover and Shavuot, that means there's going to be a great outpouring. But I have to what? Position myself. Hallelujah and bless your name because I got to be in position for the blessing and obedience brings the blessing so therefore I might want to count. Hallelujah and bless your name. So teach us how to number our days. Make it count. What you say? Make it count. Today is the sixth day. You're going into Air Shabbat tonight. About to enter into my sweet rest. Why would you be worried about anything? It's time to lay aside every weight that so easily besets you. I know you in the wilderness. But lay aside every weight that so easily besets you. And cast your cares on him in the wilderness now. Because he cares for you. He shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Imagine right now being in the wilderness and you're not worried about one thing because the most high God is raining manna from heaven and telling you go out every day and get your necessary portion. What you say, go out every day and count the omer and preparation of the great outpouring. I'm about to give you something. Because I chose you. You're a royal priesthood. A holy nation. Many are called. But few are chosen. And I didn't call you. Because you were many in number 5 a.m. prayer. I chose you. Because you were few. And I was pulling out a remnant. That would be obedient. To my Torah. So now I can actually meet you at Mount Sinai from this wilderness to the wilderness of Yeshua being in the wilderness of 40 days and 40 nights. And I can actually pour out my anointing on you now. Come on now. When I give you my Torah, revelation comes. When I give you my Torah, wisdom comes. When I give you my Torah, knowledge and understanding I'm about to open up your mind like never before. You talking about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. The Ruach HaKadosh is going to lead and guide you into all truth in the wilderness. If you walk by faith and not by sight. Uh-oh. Because some of us in this wilderness talking about, mm-mm, no, this does not look like uh, day six, really. I, I, I've been counting before this, but I know y'all say count 49 days and then one more 50. A great outpouring is about to happen in my life. But it really don't look like it or feel like it. And the most I got is like, uh, I told you to walk by faith and not by sight. So it doesn't matter what you see. 
If you would keep your eyes on the most high God, he said, I will keep you in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on him. Where's your mind at? Mm -hmm. You already know the mind needs three, day, three things every day. Come on now. Your mind needs three things every day. Number one, focus. Because whatever has your focus masters you. So if you're in the wilderness and you're kind of murmuring and complaining about being in the wilderness, then that little mindset going to master you, which is a defeated mindset. Focus in Hebrew means blindness. You better be so blind that you only see the most high God right now in the wilderness. You ain't worried about what's going on. You ain't worried about what you have, what you don't have. You're not leaning to your own understanding. You're acknowledging the most high God. I took you in the wilderness to separate you from some stuff, from your Egypt. I'm trying to bring you into a promise. What you say? I'm trying to bring you into a promise. The promised land is about what I promised you. I promised you that I would do all but and exceed every expectation that you have. Now I say him who was able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you thought. Or even ask for. In the wilderness. Really? Yeah. Most high God is like, mm-mm. Just because it doesn't look like it doesn't mean I'm not blessing you. Come on now. You have the greatest ex example. The children of Israel. Did their clothes and shoes wear out? No. Were they hungry and thirsty in the wilderness? No. And then when they requested stuff, they was like, now look, I'm, I've been eating this man and I'm going to need some meat. That's just like black folks. I'm going to need some meat to go with these crackers. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I know you do the greatest fish fry. Stop playing. Let that quail come up from the earth. For real. Come on. <laughs> you know how we are. We like, come on, most high God. So the most high God said, okay, I'm going to exceed your expectation. I'm going to give you what you didn't even ask for. See, when you're walking through the wilderness, the most high God is treating you like Solomon. You know, Solomon, you only ask for wisdom. But I'm going to give you what you didn't even ask for. What? I'm going to abundantly bless you. Because I am the most high Jira. I called you into the wilderness for a three-day feast. Now, are you going to be obedient and count? It's the sixth day, y'all. It's the sixth day. Come on now. Are you going to be obedient and count? And imagine after counting six days, we go to a sweet Sabbath rest. So we got seven complete Sabbaths to go, and we're going to keep counting? What you say? He said you can count on me. When you can't count on nothing else, you can count on me. Count that. For real. Because, you know, sometimes you be like, you know, you be counting on folks, and you know they will just disappoint you. But the Most High God said, Oh, you can make this one count. Trust me. You can count on me. Hallelujah. And bless your name. So I'm excited about being in the wilderness and counting on the most I got. Yeah. First of all, I told you to meet me here. I told you to come out of your Egypt and come on, have a feast with me. Now, I'm going to leave you in the wilderness unless you're disobedient. Unless you rebel against my word Unless you refuse my covenant Come on now because there was a foolish bride That was like oh we ain't got to have no oil in our lamp All we got to have is Jesus I'm sorry you're going to have to have Jesus in the Torah Because the Torah is the oil in the lamp So by the time you recognize and wake up That it was the Torah all along You're going to look at me like Dr. J Can I get some oil? Oh no I just got enough for me now You're going to have to go where they sell it at because now the bridegroom is coming. You ain't going to get me caught up because I'm trying to share my oil and I ain't got enough to burn my lamp. You got to understand. So as we go through this teaching right now of the wilderness, because it's about a king and a kingdom, right? And we're coming into a kingdom mindset. Because 12 is the number for government. And the Most High God, with the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, he was setting up his government. So it was a kingdom mandate. Oh, come on and set that thing up for tomorrow, Most High. Yeshua had a kingdom mandate. So we are in the same place 
as the children of Israel, we're about to get our ketubah. I'm talking about a covenant promise. And right now the Most High God is positioning us for the promise, for the kingdom. Because that was the message of Yeshua. The kingdom of God is at hand. Come on now. That was the message. The message wasn't healing. The message wasn't deliverance. The message was my kingdom has showed up on earth. Do you not know it? Oh, I'll give you an unshakable kingdom. Yes, I will give you an unshakable kingdom. Yeshua even said, now look, I know they had, you know, during Passover, they had to crucify me. But I had to tell them to their face, now look now, if my kingdom was of this world, <laughs> oh my goodness, they would come take you out right now. So I mean, we got an unshakable kingdom. So we're entering the kingdom by the way of the wilderness. He said, this don't look like no kings and queens in the wilderness. Come on now. First of all, I got to wash you in the word. And I got to get rid of all those gods you've been serving. And I have to put you in a place where you understand that it's about a king and a kingdom. And I am the most high God. Okay, I'm a jealous God now. I got to strip you of your Egypt. I'm jealous, for real. I'm the only one. And I'm trying to make you my bride. Come on, I want to be your husband. You know, I had your forefathers in the wilderness. You know, they broke some stuff. I'm trying to renew this thing with you. I'm trying to take that thing off of tablets of stone and put it on your flesh. And because you love me, ooh, put something on my flesh. What you say? And because you love me, ooh, on my flesh. Oh, you'll keep my commandments. You love me, don't you? Yes, I love you. Now we're in relationship. Oh, I got to betrothal you. What? I got to give you my ketubah, my covenant, my promise. I can't break my promise. I can't go against my word. I change not. Well, come on and give me the ketubah then. I was married to you. Come on, most high God. Yes, I'm a jealous God. And there shall be no other gods before me. So the only way I can strip you of those other gods, I got to take you to the wilderness because you've been in Egypt for 400 years. 400, uh, really? Yes. And you've been in a Greek mindset. Oh my goodness, Dr. J, you like 54. You've been in a Greek mindset at least 44 years. Oop! 40 is the number of testing. What you say? Okay. 40 is the number of testing. Come on now. So I got to get you to come out of your Egypt. Just because y'all been walking in Torah for about seven, eight years, y'all ain't overcame yet. Y'all still singing that Martin Luther King song. We shall overcome. Someday. <laughs> Someday. But I have to wash you with the word. Because you keep going back to a Egypt mindset, a Greek mindset, a religion mindset. You keep going back. And I know it's not easy. You waver in that thing like, I know I want to walk in the tour. Then all of a sudden, you, this thought will come up. And I'll be like this, that ain't my thought. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As high as the heaven is high, they're higher than yours. So I need you to cast down that Greek thought. That was so Greek. Was that Greek? Yes, that was a Greek thought. I'm going to need you to think Hebraically. Because Hebrew is action. Faith without works is dead. Obedience without works is dead. So it's in your walk. What? No, it's not in your talk. It's in your walk. So I got to get you to walk in this wilderness. Because I'm going to talk to you. What you say, Moses? I got. I'm going to need you to walk in this wilderness because I'm going to do all the talking now. Because that's what he kept saying. And the Most High God said to Moshe, speak to the children of Israel and say to them. He's doing all the talking. I just need you to walk. What? Yes. Problem is you've been doing too much talking. And it ain't matching with your walk. So I'm going to get your walk together as I'm talking. And then your confession going to match your conduct. What you say, Most High? Oh, it's done in the wilderness. It's all done in the wilderness. Okay, all right then. I'll just be quiet. As a matter of fact, be still and know that I am God. What you say? I'll just be quiet then. As a matter of fact, be still and know that I am God. 
See, salvation is a lifestyle. You thought salvation means that you were saved. You know, you went down to that altar. You accept my son, thank you, because you can't get in without him. But you thought salvation means I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. I'm saved. Glory to his name. I'm going to suffer down here, but I'm going to be on them streets of gold. Hey, gates of pearl. That's going to be me, me and the most high hanging in heaven. No. That's a great thought. To escape earth and go to heaven. I'm sorry. When I created you, I created you to have dominion in the earth realm. That's why you don't know about a kingdom. You trying to go to heaven. I can't do nothing with you in heaven. <laughs> what? You going to take heaven away from me? Now, you done took them folks cross. You done took that Christmas tree called testicles, all that kind of stuff. Now, you going to take heaven too? Yeah. They trying to get the rapture. Caught up to me, him. Ain't gonna be no caught up to meet him. You gonna be caught up all right if you ain't in the Torah and he gonna say, I never knew you. Oh, this is the rapture. That's your rapture. I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye, he worked iniquity. I think you might have stayed. You want to stay in this wilderness and get some understanding of the God that you serving. Yeah. Thank you, most high God. Yeah. You don't want to hear him say, I never knew you. Then all of a sudden, you're going to be caught up in a whirlwind and gone somewhere. You're in a rapture now. That's your rapture. I never knew you. Depart from me. Whoop. There you go. Oh, Lord. It's a rapture. As a matter of fact, it's a rap. Because <laughs> you ain't in the Torah. So, therefore, you got to understand right now, our God is a covenant-keeping God. It's about his covenant. And if you're not in covenant relationship with him, then you're outside the Torah, and guess what you did? We learned this on last Sabbath. You done woke up death. And you guess what? You bearing children, your newborn baby is dead too. Because the most high God said, I never knew you. Rapture. So it may be. Y'all might have done spoke that rapture into existence because y'all not in the Torah. So you do got something to look forward to. Being separated from the most high God. Oh, his spirit ain't thriving with you if you're not in the Torah. There is no Holy Ghost without the Torah. Look up. There is no speaking in tongues without the Torah. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu. Ooh, Mahalek. Ooh. Thank you, Lord, for the wine. All right, now. I'm just saying now. He amazing like that. He gave us every herb bearing seed. You better shut your mouth and keep on talking, Dr. J. I'm trying to tell you, you want to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because there's always a party going on. Hello, somebody. Wake up this morning. I mean, we need to get real. We've been walking in ignorance. We've been walking in straight ignorance, doing ignorant things. I mean, come on now. If you don't come out from among them, come out from um, ancient Babylon, this harlot. Just playing a harlot all around here, just harling with everybody. Just He call you a whore and stuff. Oh, Lord. Yeah, you're not faithful. First of all, you don't know what you want to do. you kind of like bipolar. Today you're a Christian. Tomorrow you are a Pentecost. You don't know what you want to be. Religion always have you searching for something. I feel so empty. I just don't know. I don't know. Well, if you would get with the Torah, you would not be empty. You'd be full to the overflow. I'm telling you right now, David said, my cup runneth over. I'm telling you right now, reading the Omer chapter, Psalms chapter 119, eight verses every day. David is telling you, I love your precepts, your testimonies, your statutes, your commandments. You better be reading Psalms 119. Eight verses every day as we count the Omer in expectation of going up to Mount Sinai to get this uh, Torah. The children of Israel did not know what they were about to get. The problem is when Moshe went up to get the Torah, right? He went to get the commandments like we do. Oh, he been gone too long. I'm sorry. He just told you that the Most High going to bless us today. So he'll be back with the blessing. Oh, he's been gone too long. And this most high God, we can't see him anyway. We had our idols in Egypt. 
Don't you start building no idols in no uh, wilderness, because that's what they did. Don't bring your eye. Oh, let me just oh put some layer that and go. Oh, yeah, I could see it now. Be careful. Because you can be in a wilderness and think you got it going on and you building an idol. <clears throat> I worship you in this desert. Because I can't see him and he taking too long. Be careful. It's all about your relationship with the most high God. This is the time to seek, knock, and ask like never before. I'm seeking you. He said, and guess what? If you seek me, you shall find me because guess what? I called you to come here. If you seek him, you shall find him. This is a season of seeking, knocking, and asking and not being ignorant of time devices. If you think I'm about to count 49 days, and miss him? Oh, no. Mm-mm. Nope. Nope. You're going to have to separate yourself for real. I'm finding, finding myself. I got to separate myself from conversations because I thought I got the leaven out. And I had to keep saying, most high is that leaven? Oh, it's rising. Huh? Mm-hmm. Might want to open that oven so the cake will fall. It's rising. You baking something right now, Dr. J. Open up the oven and a cake, the leaven, is just, yeah, it'll fall. You got to check yourself while you counting this Omer. And I'm talking about you got seven days of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Seven days. Seven is the number of completion. So don't tell me that you can't have your attitude under control. He's completing you with the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days. That means you're complete in the wilderness. You shouldn't have no murmur and complain. You like this. I done did that Unleavened Bread thing. I wish I would say something. I'm going to just be quiet. I ain't going to say nothing in the wilderness. I ain't going to wake up death. Because, see, I ain't trying to get death to come get me. I'm just going to stay obedient to his word. Period. Aren't y'all excited? I'm so excited. Because the Most High God, he teaching this thing. Oh, it is not me. Don't ever think I'm teaching. The Most High God is teaching this thing. And I'm excited about him teaching it. Come on, Doreen. Teach this thing with me, girl, because you know the Torah. Seven equals completion. Come on and teach in the comments. That's what I'm talking about. Because one can chase a thousand, Doreen. But two, girl, shut up, can put 2,000, 10,000 to flight. Let's put them to flight now. Let's destroy every lie of the enemy. We don't walk in deception. We know who we are. We are the children of Israel. And we're doing this in remembrance of him. Keeping his Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Shavuot, counting the Omer. He said, these are my feasts. Uh-oh, Leviticus chapter 23 in its entirety. These are the feasts of the Lord. And Moses spake to the children of Israel and said to them, It shall be a holy co convocation forever throughout all your dwellings, throughout your generations. So we just doing what the most high God does. He's ordering our steps in his word. So when folks ask you, are you Jewish? Uh, I want you to turn to Leviticus chapter 23 and show me what Jewish is on Leviticus 23. He said, these are my feasts. These are the feasts of the Lord. It did not say these are the feasts of the Jewish people. But the Jewish folks, they were smart. They took your stuff. Hey, if you ain't going to use it, we will. And they are blessed people because they follow the commandments of the Most High God. Can't be mad. He's arousing us to jealousy, though. Like, what? Really? Okay. That's what the word said, that it would arouse us to jealousy, Judah. Wake up, Judah. You are the lawgiver. And so that's the reason why it's so easy when you really wake up to Torah. It's like, ugh, second nature. Like it, like your soul just becomes like alive. Like it's alive. This has been what I've been looking for all this time. Yes, it was right there hidden for such a time as this. So aren't you excited? Aren't you excited?
I'm excited. After yesterday's teaching on the Oma. Oh, my goodness. Um, We're going to do that again. It will be an encore on that Oma teaching. Because we got 49 days in this wilderness. And we need to understand what we're doing. So thank you, Most High, for knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Whoa, Most High. I come lifting up everyone on Facebook Live this morning. We say, nevertheless, not our will, but thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because you are king of kings and lord of lords. And we're in the same place as the children of Israel. We are the second exodus. The greater exodus coming out. From among them as you scattered us to the nations. You're regathering us now. You said first you will send out the fishermen. Come on, those I got to fish them out. And then you will send the spirit of hunt to hunt them out. Hallelujah. And bless your name. So thank you that your Holy Spirit is waking up the tribes now. The 12 tribes of Israel. You're telling Judah to come forth. You're telling Ishakar to come forth. You're telling Benjamin it's time to stand up. You're calling for the 12 tribes of Israel to meet you at Mount Sinai for a covenant. Oh Lord. I'm talking about a betrothal. I'm talking about a ketubah. I'm talking about you wrote your word on our hearts and on our minds. And guess what? We will never turn away from your tour. Because we love you, we keep your commandments. I ask you to decrease me as you give the increase. I'm excited as I want to run in this word because I know this word Woo! your word is not given. To the swift who's running this race. But to he that endures to the end. Give me endurance in the wilderness. Help me to endure. Hallelujah and bless your name. And I will forever give you all the glory. All the honor and all the praise. And it's in the mighty mighty name. Of Yeshua HaMashiach I pray. Amen, 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 amen and amen. Oh, there's a Memphis style to our study. Because the word says if two or three gather together in his name, that he would be in the midst. The word says if two touch and agree on anything, it shall be done. And I know I can't do nothing this morning without this word being established through the law, the prophets, and the writings. So the method style of study, you better shut up, is the process. A study in the word of Ahia, Asha Ahia, which is I am, that I am in Hebrew, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we seek his guidance and live in a kingdom lifestyle, the Torah. It's God's teachings and instructions in 613 principles, and it's where the creator speaks, mother. And then we search the witnesses. Through the books of the prophets, the never ends, and the books of the writings, the Ketavines, collectively the Torah, the never ends, and the Ketavines, or identified as the Tanakh, or as some refer to it, the Old Testament. Oh, but it's the only book that Yeshua studied in reference throughout the New Testament. Exodus chapter 5, verse 1. And afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in. And told Pharaoh, thus says the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Oh, Lord. Today we look to the word wilderness. Midbar, wilderness, pasture, uninhibited land, a pasture. Open field where the cattle are driven, an uninhibited plain fit for feeding flock. Boom. Not a desert, say it again. Not a desert, say it again. Not a desert, say it again. Not a desert. A pasture. Woo! My sheep know my voice. In another, they won't follow. Feed my sheep. 
Dr. J. Okay, the Torah testifies. Numbers chapter 9, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, What? Jeremiah, the prophets, proclaim. Thus says the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. Even Israel, when I went to cause him rest. What? Grace was in the wilderness? Y'all said grace didn't show up to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Stop it. Grace was in the wilderness. This says right here, Jeremiah. They found grace. In the wilderness. Come on, go with me. The writings bear witness. Joshua chapter 1, verse 4. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. Ooh, we have completed the method style of study this morning. Sound like there's some water in the wilderness. Reviewing the word wilderness. First, we recognize the standard set in the Torah and 613 principles. Then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophet, Jeremiah spoke, the never ease, and the books of the writings, the Ketavines. Collectively, oh, it's the Torah. It's God's teachings and instructions. His 613 principles. Come on now. Some call it the Old Testament. But it's the only book that Yeshua studied in reference throughout the New Testament. 5 a.m. prayer. We have been led and drawn out to the place that the Most High purpose to prepare and meet with us. His chosen people. I done told you I chose you because you was few. Psalms chapter 78 verse 52. But made his own people to go forth like sheep. And guided them in the wilderness like a flock. Shalom Alakim. Peace be unto you 5 a.m. prayer community. For we are certainly sheep. In need of a great shepherd to lead us in the green pastures and through every dry and parched land. What you say? Shalom, Alaki. Peace be unto you, 5 a.m. prayer community. For we are certainly sheep in need of a great shepherd to lead us in green pastures. And through every dry and parched land. Amos chapter 8 said there will come a day where folks and there will be a famine in the land. Not for water nor meat, but for the word of the most high God. There's a thirst and hunger going on for the thirst of the word of the most high God. So now. Are you ready? Yes, Lord. For the word of God. The father of Abraham. The father of Isaac. The father of Jacob. Are you ready? For the word of God. The father of Abraham. The father of Isaac. The father of Jacob. This morning we are coming out of the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 8 in its entirety. Wrong chapter. What's the chapter? Deuteronomy chapter 8. Got the wrong scripture up here. All right now. Correction. This morning we are coming out of the book of Deuteronomy. Because we are the second exodus, the greater exodus, Deuteronomy chapter 8 in its entirety. Again, this morning, we are coming out of the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8 in its entirety, and it reads, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. 
that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thou God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thy heart, whether thou wouldest keep it his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna. Who count the over which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God does man live. Thou raiment not O upon thee. Thou raiment wax not O upon thee. Neither did thou foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thy heart that as a man chasing his son, so the Lord thou God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thou God to walk in his ways and fear and to fear him. For the Lord thou God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranate, a land of olive oil and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and are full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thou God for the good land which he has given thee. But where that thou forget not the Lord thou God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwell therein and when thou herb in thy flocks multiply and thou silver in thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied. Then thou heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thou God which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and droughts where there was no water. Who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint. Who led thee in the wilderness with manna, which thou fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thou latter end. And thou said in thy heart, my power and my might of my hand has got me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thou God. For it is he that gives thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore until thy fathers, as it is this day. You know what, Dr. J, you was tripping yesterday. <coughs> Excuse me, Most High. Speak to me in your word. You was tripping yesterday. When you didn't get that little king that you thought you should get, you was counting your money. But hold up. I got something to say to you, Dr. J. Right. But thou shalt remember the Lord thou God. For it is he that gives thee power to get well. That he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy father, as it is this day. And it should be. And thou do at all forget the Lord thou God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish.
perish. As the nations which the Lord destroys before your face, so shall ye perish. Because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. You got it now? Yes! Say it one more time and establish it. Okay. But thou shalt remember the Lord thou God. For it is he. Uh-oh. Not kids club daycare. Not even you, Dr. J. With or without license. I'm trying to talk to you right now. But thou shalt remember. I remember you. The Lord thou God. All right, I hire, I shall hire. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. You in covenant, girl. Stop it. <sighs> that he may establish his covenant, which he swear. Unto thy fathers, as it is, what day, Dr. J? Uh, it said this day. <laughs> May the most high God stop it. Add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. You need to be in the wilderness. You'll be tripping. All right. Okay. All right. I'm good, most high. Yeah. Let the word speak. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Oh, Lord, be still and know that I am God in your wilderness. Okay. <clears throat> Can we leave me alone now, please? We're going to enter the kingdom, the wilderness testing for believers. And I'm testing you. I'm testing you. Okay. I got it. You give me power to get wealth, not kids, club, daycare. You the one who said it, so I already know. Okay. Entering the kingdom, the wilderness testing of the believers. Uh-oh. He coming for y'all. Y'all just came out of Passover. Y'all didn't do Easter. Y'all was like this. Okay, we got it. All right, right. We're going to do this Passover thing. We are Israel. We then came out of Egypt. I don't understand this wilderness part, but okay. Now we in the wilderness. He about to give us something. A law. Oh, no, we're not under the law. Okay. <clears throat> Entering the kingdom, the wilderness testing of the believers. You know how y'all say y'all believers, right? Let's see how much you believe. Ha <laughs> ha. The most high desires to bring his people into his kingdom. However, however, not everyone will be allowed in. The scripture reveals those who will be allowed in and those who will not be allowed in. Like Israel of old, many believers today have come out by the blood of the Lamb. Ooh -wee. Come on now. Like Israel of old, Many believers today have come out by the blood of the Lamb. Likewise, just like Israel of old, they will be tested in the wilderness to see whether they may enter into the kingdom. The scripture reveals that the Most High tests his people to determine who may enter in and who may not. The most high testing is a continual process of teaching, testing, discerning, and separating. You better come on, most high God. The most high God's testing is a continual process of teaching, testing, discerning, and separating. We will begin by looking at the future in time picture of the city of the most high where we see some who are allowed to enter in bless are they that do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life and may, and may enter in through the 
gates into the city. Revelations chapter 22 verse 14. Notice, now notice, some are not allowed in but are kept outside the city. What you say? Notice, some are not allowed in but are kept outside the city. For without, outside the city, are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Oh Lord! Revelation chapter 22 verse 15. The city of the Most High speaks of the close in realm of his kingdom and the place of his dwelling, also known as his people. Here we see that not everyone will be allowed into the city, but some must remain outside. So how does the Most High determine who will and who will not be allowed to enter in? When we were in school, come on now, when we were in school, we were first taught, then were tested continuously. When we were in school, we were first taught. I told y'all I was going to talk to you first. Just keep walking. Then were tested continuously. The Most High likewise puts his people through continual teaching and testing. He then gives them a final exam just before graduation time. In this teaching this morning, we will look at the ongoing testing the most high people must undergo. The Israelites, our example. What you say? The Israelites, our example. First, let us notice what the most high said about his purpose for the wilderness wandering. What you say? First let us notice what the Most High said about his purpose for the wilderness wandering. First we see the 40 year period of testing. And thou shalt remember all the ways which the Lord thou God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee, to prove thee, to test, try, or assay thee, to know what was in thy heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2. Never trust an untested person. So sometimes when you're sitting in your wilderness and it seems like it's going on for a long time, it's because you're being tested and it ain't time for the final examination. Ooh, he said that. Then we see the ongoing remedial teaching. See, you might be in the remedial class right now. All right, my you so good. Teach us how to number our days. I want to count. Okay. Then we see the ongoing remedial teaching. And he humbled thee. Ooh, ain't no breaking going on, y'all. And suffered thee to hunger. Ooh, Lord. And fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know. That man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. Does man live? Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. I got to back up from the fire a little bit. It's getting hot up in here. Hallelujah. These two passages gives us a fundamental picture of our teaching and testing today. Ooh, Lord. Notice 
In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, the Most High caused his people to wander in the wilderness for 40 years to test them, no, only one issue. What you say? To test them on only one issue. Oh, no. To see whether they would or would not keep his commandments. If Israel is our example, we should expect to see the same pattern for us today. He caused them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years to test them, to see it was only one issue. Would they keep his commandments? Come on! Doreen so if Israel Doreen is our example we should expect the same pattern for us today oh lord the same example but with grace to succeed oh lord say that again Dr. J the same example but with grace to succeed. Notice what the book of Hebrews says. Regarding the Israelites testing as it relates to ours. Say it again. Notice what the book of Hebrews says. Regarding the Israelites testing as it relates to ours. Let us labor therefore. To enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11. These are two, there are two chapters. Chapter 3 and chapter 4 of Hebrews. Devoted to warning the believers of today. What did you say? There are two chapters. Chapter 3. And chapter 4 of Hebrews devoted to warning the believers of today. Here we are told that Israel is our example. And we are reminded over and over and over again exactly why they could not enter in as a warning to us today. Israel in the wilderness is our example today. Amazingly, we see that the Most High has caused his people today to wander in the wilderness for 40 jubilees in order to test them on the same issue. To see whether we would or would not keep his same commandments. The difference is that for us today, we have the ability given to us by Messiah in you, his grace from within to succeed where the Israelites fail. No longer on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh in the inward part. Oh, Lord. The entire focus of the new covenant is on Mashiach in you and on his enabling grace to do his will so that he might bring us in to the city. Let's look closely at this testing to see if scripture might confirm, establish some of these ideas. Notice the future time of testing that will occur at the time when Messiah will return. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serve God and him that serves him not. Malachi chapter 3 verse 18. 
Part of the Most High's purpose is to test his people in order to determine and separate those whom he will bring into his kingdom from those whom he will not bring into his kingdom. The testing of the virgins. Come on, Most High God. The testing of the virgins. Yeshua gives us further insight into this testing in the parable of the wise and foolish virgins in Matthew chapter 25 verse 1 through 13 notice there were two groups of fives what you say notice there were two groups of five virgins all of them together awaiting the bridegroom's arrival as soon as the foolish virgin separate themselves over the oil, the bridegroom arrives. And the wise enter in with the bridegroom. Yeshua then tells us the test results. After the five virgins had gone in with the bridegroom, Yeshua tells us the test results. This is the response by Yeshua, and he tells us that a new covenant, eternal or everlasting covenant issue had been violated. What you say? Yeshua then tells us the test results. After the five wise virgins have gone in with the bridegroom, but he answered. And said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Matthew chapter 25 verse 12. This response by Yeshua tells us that a new covenant, eternal or everlasting covenant issued had been violated. The only everlasting covenant issue of knowing are those seen in Exodus chapter 31 verse 13. Drop down to verse 16. Ezekiel chapter chapter 20 verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 20. So notice the following passages. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual everlasting covenant. Uh, this is the word of the Most High God. This is not Dr. J's or 5 a.m. prayers word. Say it again. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual, everlasting covenant. Exodus chapter 31 verse 14. And hollow my Sabbath, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 20. The everlasting covenant, oh Lord, is not for the most high's enemies, but is only for Israel, including those Gentiles who were grafted in to Israel through faith in Messiah. The everlasting covenant has been sealed in the precious blood of Yeshua and is eternal and will endure forever. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20 and 21. The sign of those who take hold of Yeshua's everlasting covenant is that they do his will. 
As seen in Exodus and Ezekiel passages, they hollow my Sabbath. What you say? As seen in Exodus and Ezekiel passages, they hollow my Sabbath. This is very important. This is a key issue. Notice these are not Jewish Sabbath. This is very important. This is a key issue. Notice these are not Jewish Sabbath. They are his Sabbath. They include all the festivals in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 1 through 44. But let's look. For further confirmation of the virgin's testing, an earlier passage sheds more light on the nature of this test. And then I will profess unto them. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And then I will profess unto them. I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. Matthew chapter 7 verse 23. Again, we see an issue of not knowing. Again, we see an issue of not knowing. But this time we are told it is related to those who are continuing to work iniquity. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. The spirit just fell all over that thing. What you say, Most High God? Again, we see an issue of not knowing. But this time, we are told it is related to those who are continuing to work iniquity. The word Iniquity used here is the Greek word anomia, Strong's number 458, meaning lawlessness or transgressing the law. Either because of ignorance of the law or because of violating the law. <laughs> Thus we see confirmation. That transgressing the law had occurred and was ongoing. Oh, Lord. Thus we see confirmation that transgressing the law had occurred and was ongoing. It must be, it must have been related to the covenant issue of knowing. In order for the bridegroom to have said, I never knew you. Thus we see. Oh, Lord. That transgressing the law. Had occurred. And was ongoing. It must have been related to the covenant issue of knowing. In order for the bridegroom to have said, I never knew you. When the Sabbath are not kept, the law is transgressed. What you say, Doreen? When the Sabbath are not kept, the law is is transgressed. John tells us that this transgression of the law is sin. You better see 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 by the New Testament definition. So the virgins are being tested and separated based on their ammonia. Wow. Lawlessness. You looking like a foolish bride right now. 
Ooh, you ain't got no oil in your lamp. He said, say it again. Thus we see. Because see, until you're given sight, you'll never see and understand the revelation of the word of God. It says, thus we see confirmation that transgressing the law had occurred and was ongoing. It must have been related to the covenant issue of knowing. Why would the bridegroom have said, I never knew you when the Sabbaths are not kept? The law is transgressed. John tells us that this transgression of the law is sin. You better see 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. The New Testament's definition. So, the virgins are tested and separated on their anomia. Lawlessness. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. All who enter the kingdom are tested. What you say, Most High? Uh huh. All who enter the kingdom are tested. The scripture also have much to say of those who do enter the kingdom. Some will be considered least, and some will be considered great. Let's look at this briefly. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verse 19. So in this passage, we see a separation or ranking. Even among those who do enter in to the kingdom. Likewise in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20 and 21. We see the same ranking among those who choose to purge. Or cleanse themselves. Thus we see there is a testing required even among those who will enter in. Notice also in the passage that is the basis of this testing and separation. It is the keeping of the commandments, which is the same basis we have seen in all the other testings thus far. This testing it's not an issue of salvation. What you say? This testing is not an issue of salvation, of coming out by the blood, but an issue of entering in. Oh, you better come on, Holy Ghost. This testing is not an issue of salvation, of coming out by the blood. But it is an issue of entering in. It is also not an issue of things that we must do. For under the new covenant, there is nothing required or mandatory. No, the testing is simply a matter of the most high looking to see who will choose those things. That please him. Come on Mary. Without being compelled. To do so. If you love me. You'll keep my commandments. It is also. Not an issue. Of things that we. Must do. For under the new covenant is nothing required or mandatory. No, 
The testing is simply a matter of the Most High looking to see who will choose those things that please Him without being compelled to do so. So let's conclude the matter. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's conclude the matter. The testing of the believers in the wilderness is an ongoing process that has been going on for 40 jubilees. The believers will be either allowed or refused entry based on their actions or ignoring the Most High God's commandments. The time is almost here for us to take the final exams prior to entering into the kingdom. What you say? The time is almost here for us to take the final exam prior to entering into the kingdom of the Most High God. Testing in the wilderness. Amen, 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 and amen. Who Lord. That was so good. That was so good. That was so good. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Yes. So let's conclude the matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man. Yes. If. <laughs> Come on, Most High God. If you love me. If I should go astray. If you love me. You'll keep my commandments. Come on, girl. Play this song. Oh, Lord. So good.
So good. I don't know about nobody else, but I'm loving this manna. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. I am loving this manna. I'm picking it up. I'm getting my necessary portion. I don't know about you, but I'm getting my necessary portion. I'm loving this manna. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Ooh, sweeter than a honeycomb. Oh, Lord. Sweeter than the honey in a honeycomb, Dr. J. You better know how sweet I am. Ooh, gooder and gooder. I know that's right, most I got. Ooh, so good. So good, so good, so good. I'm getting my portion. I'm getting my portion. I need mine every day. Coming out of Passover, going into the wilderness, getting ready to go into Shabbat Oath, the great outpouring. I'm going to need my portion every day. This is a spiritual checkup. That teaching on yesterday that blew my mind about the Omer. That's the reason why we're going to do an encore on that thing. We are in a spiritual evaluation, re-evaluation, a spiritual checkup. He's testing us. You know, we can say a whole lot of things out of our mouth, but we sure can't walk it out. We'd be like this, oh, he is so mighty. He's the most, oh my goodness. He supplies all my needs. And guess what? It's according to his riches and glory. Go for that job promotion and don't get it. I can't believe it. I, I guess the most high God just didn't want me to have it. I'm sorry. He shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. That was your plan, but not his purpose. See, we can talk a good talk. Would die for the most high God. Till there's a knock at the door. Two folks sitting there with shotguns talking about ready to die today for the most high. Well, I wasn't ready today though. But I will die for him though. Just not today. Okay, can y'all come back like I think I'm 54. About 94. I might be ready to go then. <laughs> I'm just saying, we talk all these great things out of our mouths. But I walk. Our confession don't match our conduct. You know, we'll say, oh, I'm sold out. Oh, I'm sold out. I don't care what happens. I'm sold out for the Lord. Okay. All of a sudden, there's a three-day vacate on your door. Or, uh, I'm sorry, you're in foreclosure now. I don't think I could ever pray again. I don't want to pray no more. I just need to go into a sabbatical. What happened to you was sold out, though? Oh, you sold out until something happened. You sold out until you go into the wilderness. You got to have a nevertheless kind of spirit. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. You got to have a Job kind of spirit. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Stop talking stuff that you ain't willing to walk. Ooh, that's part of your wilderness right there while you're still in there for so long. You keep talking, not walking. Uh-oh, uh-oh. You done slowed down your progress because you're talking too much. Where you walk at? All right, most high God. We going deeper. We're going deeper into revelation because we are no longer on milk. We are no longer on milk. So we're going deeper for the word of God. Meet in due season. Uh-oh. Set it up, most high God. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I got you for 40 days. I got so many teachings for you. 
meat in due season. <clears throat> Hallelujah and glory to his name. But do you know what meat in due season really means? We gonna teach that thing. Meat in due season. We gonna teach that. While we're in the wilderness. Come on now. I love the most high God. Because it's his season. So therefore there will be meat in due season. Uh oh. There ain't no meat when you're out of season. <laughs> That's why they still on milk. <laughs> I get it most high God. Milk. Is for the. Beginners. Elementary. Meat is for the seasoned ones. That are seeking the word of the most high God. So now we're going for the meat of the word. So we got to know we're entering the kingdom, right? By way of the wilderness. So we got to really know what was the mandate of Yeshua. Uh-oh. What was his mandate? You can't come out of the wilderness and don't know what the mandate is. So tomorrow, Facebook Live, we're changing the time to noonday prayer. Oh, Lord. Because you know there are three appointed times for prayer, which is praying without ceasing. It's 9, 12, and 3. So 5 a.m. prayer is going to noon. We're going to start coming on at 12 o'clock. What you say? Oh, yeah, you get to rest for real. You get to sleep in a little bit longer. Rest in him as we go into Sabbath on tonight. But at 12 o'clock tomorrow, uh, Mountain Standard Time in Colorado. But 2 o'clock East Coast Time, we going to be on. Please begin to spread the news that 5 a.m. prayer is starting at noon, starting tomorrow. East Coast, that's 2 p.m. Let's go. We going to do this thing because I love the Most High God. He's taking us deeper for the revelation. We like the Bereans. We going to break up this thing. We're going to dig deeper just because Paul's saying it. Come on now. I know we Hebrews. We got to teach. We got to actually study. Study the word of the most high God. All right. So tomorrow, that word going to be so awesome tomorrow. You do not want to miss it. I'm trying to tell you. You do not. Y'all think don't wake up dead on last Sabbath. Ooh, wait till tomorrow. Wait till tomorrow. Doreen said deeper than the oceans Yes Doreen Deeper than the ocean sister Oh Lord Please tell Pastor Wilkins Keith Wilkins bless him And I, I, I'm praying for him continuously Every day as he takes Torah To the tribes and wake up Israel tell him Doreen I said bless him so good Alright this morning Shabbat Shalom so get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. We are on YouTube. Come on now. Support us on YouTube. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. It will encourage you. Have a supernatural sixth day going into his holy Sabbath. I love you, love you, love you. Oh, I love you. Bye now. So good. So, so good.